Hey, what is up guys? Epic Pokemon TCG here and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be taking a look at a deck that did pretty well at the Canadian Nationals Tournament in the Senior Division. Uh, this deck got top four, so pretty good there. And I was repeatedly yawning in my last like eight recordings so bad that I actually had to keep restarting. So hopefully this G Fuel I got next to me can help me out. So we're going to go ahead and hop into this sucker by taking a look at Seismitoad DX. Now, Seismito DX has Quaking Punch. Your opponent can't play any item cards from their hand during the next turn with a base of 30. So when you think about it, your opponent can't play cards like Battle Compressor or VS Seeker, Ultra Ball, Trainer's Mail. Some decks use Max Elixir now, so you can't really use that either. So Seismito is going to be shutting down a lot of that stuff. Also, it has Grenade Hammer for 130 damage. And then you can do 30 to, or you have to do 30 to 2 of your bench Pokemon. Uh, grenade Hammer is just really in here mostly to just hit the living crap out of your opponent if you can break that Quaking Punch lock and just finish them off. Now with the 30 damage to 2 of your bench Pokemon, if uh, Rough Seas is on your field when you come back around to your turn, then in hindsight really it's just 130 with no repercussions. So that's pretty good there. Now next up we're going to take a look at Reg Ice as soon as I get a swig of my G Fuel. Oh, there we go. Now, Red Eyes has Ice Beam for 30, flip a coin if head. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. And then Resistance Blizzard for 70 during your post next turn. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EX. So what this means is pretty much if this gigantic EX goldenness right here is on the card, then they can't do squat the Red Eyes, which can come into handy for so many situations. Now next up we're going to take a look at Mana EX here, the card that is really in here for support and doesn't ever need to be active and unless you're going to retreat it. And you don't want to attack with it because it's a 120 HP EX that will, yeah, pretty much ruin the game for you. So it's pretty much in here for the Aqua, Loop, or Aqua Tube ability, that's awkward. Uh, each of your Pokemon that has any water energy attached to it has no retreat. So that is very good because everything in here has a stupid retreat cost. Three, three, well, not Manaphy. Two, 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 and one's not bad. Two and three really are the retreat costs that you definitely don't want to be paying with this deck. And Manaphy's just in here to allow you to have a little more flexibility, a little more mobility whenever you're playing. So, Manaphy is a key card. Next up, we're going to take a look at Glaceon EX here, which has second bite and Crystal Ray, but we'll go ahead and take a look at Second Bite here first. Now the theme of this deck really is attack and your opponent can't do anything back to you, pretty much forcing them to have a Lysander, but if you're able to consistently keep up your attacks and keeping up you know, the game state and keep yourself in, then they're not going to have Lysanders for everything you absolutely do. And this deck is kind of geared towards around really dealing with any situation you might come up, unless you're just getting one shot like crazy. But second bite, and of course we'll take a look at Articuno here in a second. It's just a really good way to kind of clean up Pokemon. Uh, a base of 20, and then the, pretty much it does 10 more for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So yeah, pretty much a good way to kind of clean up stuff. And then Crystal Ray, 70 during your opponent's next turn. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from Evolution Pokemon. So this is pretty much stopping stuff like Zorark, Vespaqueen, Raichu, um, Doug Trio. Because <laughs> people play Doug Trio. But it's pretty much stopping all of that and pretty much just kind of have a wall. A little similar to Jolteon, but for evolution Pokemon. Now speaking of Articuno, uh, this has the plus trait. Pretty much if Articuno knocks out a Pokemon with damage, you take an extra prize card. So if you take out one of those big EX Pokemon, you get three. And one prize attackers, you still take two. So that's definitely very good. And as Chilling Psy, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. And then Try Edge, flip three coins. Its attack does 40 more damage for each heads. So pretty much what you want to do with this is make sure your opponent's Pokemon you're about to attack is extremely damaged and hope to God you can hit one heads at least if you're in that range. Uh, because there are going to be times and there are going to be situations where you just don't have the luck on your side and you're going to flip three tails. So This card is pretty risky but definitely whenever you do hit that good luck it definitely pays off. So Articuno, good card here. Uh, next up we're going to take a look at Hoopa EX with Scoundrel Ring. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may search your deck for up to three Pokemon EX, reveal them, and put them in your hand. Now, it does say except for Hoopa. We only play one Hoopa in here, so you don't have to worry about that. So this is going to allow you to get your Seismitoad, your Glaceon, your Manaphy, and your Shaman, 
and just makes it a little more consistent and get those attackers and cards you might need in play onto the field quicker. And we're going to round out the Pokemon by taking a look at Shaman here, uh, which has the ability set up, and that's pretty much what it's in here for, just a little more consistency. But now we're going to take a look at the supporters in the deck. Uh, Zero Sick, choose a Pokemon tool or special energy card attached to a Pokemon in play, yours and your opponent's, and discard it. Maybe your opponent head ringered you, maybe they have a Fighting Fury Belt that's annoying you. There's a float stone, there's a spirit link, there's a muscle band, there's a this, there's a that, there's a this, there's a that. Yeah. Or a DCE maybe or something like that. Zero six just in here for that handiness. Helping you out a little bit. And then we play one Skyla. Now Skyla is in here to try to help out the key cards you might need in this match. Which are Max Elixir and Energy Switch in my opinion. Or decides you have a supporter for next turn. But Max Elixir and Energy Switch are two cards we're going to talk about here in a second. But Skyla is just really in here to help you grab those trainers you might need at the right time. And Sycamore, we really don't need to go over this too much. Uh, just discard your hand and draw seven. And N can be a very good card in this deck. And I feel like this is one of the decks that's most, or it's the strongest in, excuse me. Uh, each player shuffles their hand into their deck and then draws a card for each prize card they have left. So pretty much what this means is if you're really late into the game and let's say you, your opponent has like two two prize cards left or three maybe, uh, pretty much what this can do is if you end them and you have the right attacker for the right matchup going, they're playing with a very, very limited hand size and they don't really have anything that can attack you. So I, I just feel like N can be very strong in this deck just because if you're able to play it correctly and have the right cards ready at the right time, then you're pretty much kind of almost guaranteed the win or you just definitely have the favorable matchup in that situation. I feel like N's just a very good card in here. Next up is another card that I feel like is very key in this matchup, or this deck, excuse me. Well, I guess matchup would work too. Uh, Lysander is in here, really, this deck can't one-shot, but it could do a lot of damage, so you're able to bring up stuff and just finish it off. I feel like Lysander Articuno would be a good combination here. Uh, also, you can kind of bring up stuff and just stall, or you can bring up the shamans and pick them off or something like that. So, very good. And then finally, we're going to take a look at AZ. Uh, just put a Pokemon in your hand. Pretty much, uh, if you're just having something that's heavily damaged, or you have something that's stuck in the active spot, maybe they hex maniac your Manaphy, or maybe they did something, and you just you're, you're stuck. Uh, AZ's in here for that. Also, if you need the scoundrel ring again, or if you just need to get a shaman off the field because you just don't feel comfortable with it being on the field, then AZ can help you out there. And then VS Seeker to kind of round out the supporter side of this whole thing. And now we're going to take a look at the two trainers that kind of make this deck go, which is Max Elixir and Energy Switch. We're going to take a look at Max Elixir first. Look at the top six cards of your deck and attach a basic energy card you find there to a Pokemon on your bench. Basic Pokemon. Everything in here is basic, so I just said Pokemon. And then you shuffle your deck afterward. So pretty much what you want to do with this is let's say you have a Seismitoad active. So you see we have a Seismitoad here which takes two colorless energy and we only play water. Now what we want to do is have the Seismitoad active, and I'm just throwing this out as an example. Max Elixir to a bench Pokemon. And then we're going to use this energy switch card to just move it to the active, which is allowing you to attack pretty much right away. Also, if you're needing to do an attack that might take two energy, or might take three energy, then you can just move an energy off to one of your Pokemon to another one. And really, this kind of opens up plays for different attacks, opens up plays for different situations. Energy switch also allows you to move an energy so you can retreat with Manaphy for free. And it's just really a good card. I feel like these two cards are like the key, or the key trainers in this, in this whole deck. So that's just something I wanted to point out. These two, I feel like, really stand out and make the deck go. But next up, we're going to take a look at Ultra Ball here. Uh, Ultra Ball, just really to search out your stuff. Uh, Trainer Spell is in here for the consistency, just allowing you to grab key cards you might need during the matchup, like VS Seeker or Supporters or Energy Switch or just something like that. just helps you grab them. And then Super Rod, I think this is really funny that it's in here. I don't know why I find that hilarious, but I do. And then we're going to take a look at Fighting Fury. Really? I hate when I do that. Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, whenever you attach it to a basic Pokemon, they get 40 extra HP and do 10 more damage. Oh, there we go. It popped my neck. So, Science Batoni X is going to get 220 HP, 160 HP for Regice. Manaphy's going to get 160. I wouldn't recommend putting that on there, but you, I mean, if you're feeling it, dude, go for it. 
Uh, 210 for Glaceon, 160 for Glaceon, or Articuno. Is it Glaceon already? But yeah, I feel like Fighting Fairy Belt will also help this out a little better because you'll be hitting for 70, and that's kind of like the theme of this deck is hitting for 70. <laughs> but, yeah. And these two don't really need it, but it's it's an option. But yeah, Fighting Fairy Belt just kind of makes these Pokemon a little tankier and just allows them to hit a little harder. And when you pair it up with Rough Seas, it's just like, it's, it's a winning combination. You have very tanky Pokemon, and then you have Pokemon that can't be attacked. You can heal them. You can do all kinds of business with them. So definitely a very annoying combination of cards. Pretty much forcing you to have that one-shotter that can do it at the right time. And that's why I feel like this deck is so strong. But we actually have a Parallel City in here too, which is very interesting. Now Parallel City can kind of come into play for different reasons. Uh, with this blue border limiting your opponent's bench size which makes it difficult for them to have that card they can put down that can have for the certain situation or you could put it on your side yes you'll be doing less damage because of this red side but you can of course get rid of cards like shaman just so that way they don't have a way to license or something up cheap and just knock it out or you can get rid of hoopa because not a lot of times you're going to want to commit a water energy to this you can just kind of get rid of stuff that you might not need or a damage dx or something like that so parallel city can come in and play for different reasons and of course we have the 11 water energy because everything in here pretty much takes water to attack except for you because you're weird but anyway and yeah that's pretty much it if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and subscribe for some more content. I've actually already uploaded, I don't know which order I'm going to do this in, but I've actually already recorded another deck and I'm going to put them both up today. And yeah, before we go, I just want to say guys, thank you so much for 400 subscribers. It's very awesome that I was able to reach this milestone, milestone to me anyway. Uh, I couldn't have done it without all you guys supporting me. So thank you guys for that. You're all absolutely wonderful and amazing. So thank you guys for taking time out of your day to tune into my content. I cannot thank you enough for that. So I'm going to go now before I get all teary eyed again because I actually got very giddy and happy whenever I found out I hit 400. So yeah, you're all awesome. Take care. And this is Epic Pokemon TCG signing out.